Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 3rd of July, 2011. 66 years ago, Harrison Jack Smith was born. He was an overachiever. So today's trivia question is, what thing is he famous for, apart from being a geologist, an astronaut, a university professor, and a US senator? The answer will be given at the end. Looking at the GOES-15 x-ray plot, I'm beginning to believe that the Sun is just trying to tease us, or play with our minds. Two days ago, the Sun produced a whole series of little bee flares, which implied that it was becoming more active. Well, so as soon as we started to believe that, it died, and for the last 24 hours it's basically been brain dead, with the X-ray background level dropping to a level that we haven't seen for quite some time. So what happens this morning? It's producing a whole bunch of little bee flares again. So do we believe that the Sun is going to become more active? Or is it just going to die again? And to be perfectly honest, I do not have the foggiest idea what it's going to do next. The solar activity acting as though it's up one minute and down the next uh, is reflected in the sunspot regions as well. Region 1242, which was our strongest region, is now right on the west limb and is decaying rapidly. Region 1243 is fairly steady, but it has some growth in the reading part of the region and some decay in the trailer. As you may recall, yesterday 1244 was decaying away rapidly and I predicted it wouldn't be here today. But today it is the fastest growing region on the disk. And people wonder why a lot of solar physicists have no hair. Today as it's rather a slow day, I think I'm going to show you all the different sources of data that I normally use in putting together these reports. A lot of the data doesn't actually get into the reports, but I check it just in case it gives us more information about what's going on. The beauty of this is all this data is available to you too. So you can go to these websites and take a look at the data and see what's going on or even make your own videos too. That would be fun. Anyway, let's take a look at the development of these regions over the last 48 hours using the HMI data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First the white light movie and then the magnetic movie. And you can see the comings and goings of these regions uh, throughout this period. Now we'll take a look at the solar atmosphere by using the data from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, looking first at the transition region and then at the corona. As in the previous few days, the transition region is not showing a lot of activity, except for in region 1244, which seems to be the source of most of the eruptions. In the corona movie, you can see two small regions coming over the east limb, but they're very weak and very diffuse. So I don't think these are going to be major flare-producing regions. I've added an additional AIA channel today, the Iron 14 channel, which is typified by about 2 million degrees. So this is looking at what's going on in the active regions rather than in the quiet corona. To find out what's going on in the outer corona, we turn to the LASCO instrument on the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO. It has two coronagraphs on board, C2 and the larger field of view C3. The data show today that we have had a coronal mass ejection from behind the west limb. So that might be from that filament that we were talking about a couple days ago that had the potential to be lifting off. But how do we tell whether it's from one of our active regions that are on the disk or from behind the west limb? For that we need to go to the stereo spacecraft which are positioned at the moment about 90 degrees ahead of the Earth and about 90 degrees behind the Earth. So let's take a look at those data, both from their chronographs and their uh, coronal imagers, and see whether we can see what happened uh, as far as this uh, coronal mass ejection is concerned. First let's take a look at the Stereo B, or the Stereo Behind spacecraft, which will leave the Earth on the right in the, all of these pictures. And you can see that the first faint CME that we saw in the um, SOHO data is to the north uh, and towards the Earth. However, the second one is away from the Earth, so it is likely to be on the back of the Sun. The Stereo A data shows the Earth on the left. I was hoping to see in the coronal images some evidence for activity either in the quiet sun or in an active region to give us some clue to the origin of that coronal mass ejection. Unfortunately, I don't see any such activity, so the origin of it remains a mystery. The ACE spacecraft gives us information about the temperature, density, velocity and magnetic field in the solar wind. The only thing of note here is how variable the speed of the solar wind has been in the last 24 hours which is typical of a slow speed solar wind stream. The NOAA 15 spacecraft gives us information about the state of geospace, particularly what's going on in the auroral zones. Because it's a polar orbiting spacecraft, it gets images of both the North Pole and the South Pole. 
and at the moment you can see both of them are fairly undisturbed. The KP index, which is a measure of how disturbed the Earth's magnetic field is, has been varying between 0 and 3, which is relatively quiet. In compiling these reports, I also find it useful to look at some of the ground-based observatories, particularly the National Solar Observatory, Mauna Loa Solar Observatory, which, which produces a chronographic image close into the Sun, Big Bear Solar Observatory, Meudon, which is in France, uh, the Soon Network, which is run by the Air Force, the Gong Network, which is run by the National Solar Observatory, and the Dominion Radio Observatory, which gives us RF 10.7 flux measurements. Once again, all these... <coughs> Once again, all this data is available for you to look at if you want to. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at B1 level. The sunspot number has risen to 54. The radio sun intensity is at 86 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is at 400 kilometers per second, with a density of about 4 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my 24-hour forecast is that we've got a good chance of sea flares, though I'm cheating there a little bit because I just looked at the GOES plot and we've just had a C flare. M flares and X flares are unlikely though. The sunspot number will remain relatively low and probably will go a bit lower. The chance of getting CMEs is very good. The solar wind speed will remain low. And the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm is very poor. In the longer term we see there are no major regions coming over the east limb so we can't expect any increased flare activity from regions rotating onto the disk and our best chance of getting increased in flare rates to have our existing regions grow or new regions emerge. So the answer to the trivia question about what else Jack Smith was famous for is that he was the last man to stand on the surface of the moon. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.